Didn't have to press record. Oh, you have. 20 seconds. <laughs> hey guys, I'm pretty sure most of you know who I am by now, but if you don't and you're new to watching, my name's Jeremy and this is School of Wok. Welcome to Wok Wednesdays. This week it's all about a Malaysian street food dish, nasi lemak. So nasi lemak is not necessarily an easy dish to, to make, but it's kind of one of those things where there's a few different components and it's a really impressive sort of weekend meal or alternative to Sunday lunch. I'm going to start with the actual rice. I've washed my rice three or four times just to get out that excess starch, just with cold water. And I'm making a coconut rice. So I've got half coconut milk and half chicken stock. I've got two cups of rice here. I'm actually gonna measure the coconut milk and chicken stock. One to one works pretty well with this. So I've got roughly one cup of rice to one and a quarter cups of water. So I've got two cups of rice there, so that's two and a half cups of water or liquid. Bring that to a boil. I'm just gonna take a pinch of salt and a pinch of sugar. So if you're cooking everyday rice, it would just be water. But with this coconut rice, we've got that coconut milk and the chicken stock. So that fattiness from the milk and the chicken stock will just sort of keep the grains of rice nice and separate, which is what I love about this. I'm gonna keep that on a cover. It's now boiling, so I'm gonna bring the boil down to simmer on a medium heat and let that simmer away until the level of water hits the level of rice and it starts sort of just bubbling little holes in between the rice. At that point, I'm gonna switch it off. Next up, my curry. So nasi lemak is kind of like a buffet of all different types of food that go with your coconut rice. That rice is the driving force of the dish. Now, the, it always comes with some sort of curry. So I'm gonna go for a really sort of classic Malaysian style chicken curry uh, to go on the side with this with a deep fried boiled egg. Right, the, uh, the chicken itself always has to be on the bone makes it much more succulent, much more tasty. So I've got chicken thigh and leg pieces. I'm gonna fry that chicken off just so that I can use the oil from the chicken to cook off my spices. My spices here, I've got some whole spices, some clove, cumin seeds. I've got some chili, so bird eye chili, lime leaves, they're kaffir lime leaves, and then some coriander seeds and some cinnamon bark. Outside of that, the only powder here is a little bit of chili powder. You could sear your chicken pieces in a separate pan, but I want to sear it in the same. So A, I've got less washing up. I've got a lot of things going on here today. And secondly, I want to get the flavor and that any excess fat out of the chicken so that that fat can be used to temper my spices. You want to sear your chicken until it's sort of golden brown on both sides. So it'll take about sort of five to ten minutes, not too long, but enough to give it that nice colour. Whilst the chicken's searing, you may as well prepare the rest of your ingredients. Now we have super large onions at School of Wok, so we're probably going to take half of this. I'm going to finely dice your onion. Good dices of onion for your base flavour to go along with all those spices. And then some finely chopped ginger and garlic. And this curry is definitely more home style curry than sort of what you would get in your restaurants. 
You know, not excessively fatty, just flavoured with loads of great base ingredients. Similar amount of ginger. And again, the ginger can be really roughly chopped up. You know, it's all going to sort of melt into the, the base of the curry anyway. It doesn't have to be too precise. And I can hear the chicken skin going crispier now because it's not quite as spitty as it was. Ginger, garlic, all in the same bowl. And then my whole bird eye, I can, depending on how hot you want it, you can either finely chop it, which you'll get a lot of heat out of, or I'll show you with the other one. You can just sort of open it up and then you'll get heat out of it and flavour but not over hot. Depends how, how much chilli tolerance you have really. So that base, onion, ginger, garlic, chilli, all ready. The only thing I have to chop up now is your tomato but I'm going to check my rice and turn my chicken legs first. So my rice is pretty much all the water or the liquid has evaporated, which is good. So it's been on a sort of low to medium heat for about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to switch that off, leave the lid on and just let that steam in its own steam for the next 15, 20 minutes whilst I'm cooking the curry. Chicken needs a couple more minutes just to brown the other side. I'm going to take that out in a clean bowl. Next up with your base flavours is your lemongrass. You could heal the outer layers of your lemongrass if you wish, but you all know I like bashing things with a cleaver, so that just opens up the flavour and brings out the real fragrance of the lemongrass, which makes this dish along with the lime leaves. I'm going to put those nearby my onions. My lime leaves, they're ready to go as well. I've got some tomatoes. I'm going to use fresh tomato juice here to make almost the spice paste um, for, the, for that base flavour of the curry and then we'll season it later on. You want to dice your tomatoes. Now I say there's a lot going on here but the nice thing about this is outside of the, maybe the rice which you want sort of fresh you could cook your curry the day before and it would taste really good the next day saves you time. Once your curry's cooked, it develops more flavours. Chicken's brown nicely. So you want to remove your chicken and all that flavour or that sort of stickiness on the bottom of the pan, that's going to add a lot of flavour to the curry. Now, onto your spices. The whole spices go in first. I'm on a medium heat here so it doesn't burn the spices. So tempering your spices is really important because it really releases all the flavour and the oils of the spices. You smell that fragrance of the clove and the lime leaf almost immediately. Before it catches too much, the Cumin seeds should just brown nicely, not burn. Your onions should go in. At this stage, you want to brown your onions for about five to seven minutes, something like that. It, it could take a little bit longer. What's most important, it needs to sweat down, soften, but also get that nice and brown colour. Next up, your ginger, garlic and chilli. And I put that in now just so it doesn't burn, but much like the spices, you want to temper that. You want them to cook through nicely before I add any liquid. Stir that through. So at this point where you've got your onions browning nicely, you're getting more sort of sticking on the bottom of the pan. It's really fragrant, but not grassy and flavor or an ar aroma. Then your spices, your dry ground spices go in, that's turmeric, and chilli powder. Mix those in 
to the onions. They'll brown the onions even more, much quicker. Your lemongrass, whole but bashed, can go in. And your tomatoes, I like to put in at this point because all the juice from those tomatoes will start to lift all the flavour that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. We're deglazing essentially. I don't mind a bit of salt at this point as well because that salt will start to bring out the moisture from the tomatoes. One ingredient I haven't talked about is this belachan, which is basically a Malaysian shrimp paste. It makes your Malaysian curries really authentic. If you can't get this, look for the Thai shrimp paste. And if you can't get Thai shrimp paste, just leave it out. But that sounds pretty strong stuff. So no more than a teaspoon is required. It's very salty, very strong and shrimpy flavor. But it does add a great savory flavor to the dish. You want to melt it through. So just push into it so that you don't, no one gets a lump of shrimp paste. No one likes a lump of shrimp paste in their mouth. So mix that through into that tomato juice. At this point, try and scrape off as much of that flavor from the bottom of the pan as you can using the juices from the tomatoes. We'll add more liquid with the coconut milk and your chicken stock later on, but you don't want it to burn. So I've got this almost homogenous paste and that's formed from the, all that liquid from the tomatoes and a good stir through. I'm on a medium to high heat now. I'm gonna add my coconut milk to the curry. You can add as much or as little coconut milk as you want. It gives it that nice creaminess. I'm gonna bring it to a boil before you stir it. I don't like my curry to be too coconutty, so I'm gonna leave that amount of coconut milk and then just use the chicken stock for the rest of the liquid. And the reason for sort of bringing it to a boil first is that eventually I want the oil from the coconut milk to split from the actual solid and that intensifies the flavor of the curry underneath. Chicken stock. Bring that to a boil and your chicken goes in. Chicken in. Just looking at the color of that curry, you know it's gonna be delicious. And I haven't even seasoned it yet. Don't waste the juices. Just make sure all that chicken's nicely covered by the sauce. And then have it on a medium heat, simmering away. Cover it with a lid. 20 minutes minimum, but you might wanna push it to 30 or 40 minutes if you want even more flavor in the chicken. Nasi lemak usually comes with lots of different little condiments. You've got your cucumber, your sambal, and then a boiled egg. Sometimes Nasi Lakmak stores have just boiled eggs on the table, ready for you to dig into for free. I've had it a couple of times with a deep fried boiled egg, so I'm gonna go for it. We're going all out here with your Nasi Lakmak. My oil needs to be a good heat. Now, have I got excessive amounts of oil in here just because I don't want to waste too much oil just for one or two eggs. But you wanna pop your eggs into the oil and they'll go golden brown pretty quickly. So I'm gonna turn them over once one side's golden brown. It's a very weird thing to do with eggs, but it kind of works. You can see the eggs sort of blistering as I speak. Now they're brown nicely, so you just flip that over When you're deep frying anything, always have a bit of kitchen towel ready. You can see how quickly that's changed colour and got that crispy texture on the outside of the egg. Probably completely unnecessary, but it does change this dish. The curry has cooked through really nicely. The sauce over that 30 minutes or so is Thickened up a bit, but it's nice and soupy still, so it'll just soak into the rice. Just lift that lid off for the last five minutes, and that texture of that sauce is just fantastic. I'll show you that. I'm gonna have a little taste before I season this. Because remember, I did put some salt into the tomatoes already. I'm only gonna put a little pinch of salt more 
and then a pinch of sugar. Similarly to the rice, I'm trying to flavour the sauce, accentuate the savoury with the salt, and then bring out the sweetness of the coconut milk with the sugar. We shouldn't need much more than that. Oh yeah, it's got that balance now. I can really feel that heat as well from the chilli. That is delicious. So that curry is done. Ready to plate up. All the components of my nasi lemak are ready. I've got my coconut rice here. Traditionally, if they're serving nasi lemak in a restaurant, you get a good bowl of rice per portion. So that guy can go just off centre. Got my cucumber slices. Just go round the rice. Homemade sambal, coriander. I'm actually gonna put into my combo here of peanuts and deep fried shallots. Just pick a few bits of coriander into this. Give that a mix around. And then you've got crunchy bits with that fresh coriander flavour in there as well. My chicken curry, of course, the main event. And get a good leg onto this plate. And then the sauce all over the top of that chicken. Whoa. Look at that, it's getting me excited. And then my deep fried egg on the side. Homemade nasi lemak. The excitement, I am literally salivating right now. What you wanna try and do, the trick here is trying to get a piece of everything or bit of everything onto one fork if it's even possible. Kind of like eating a fry up. Never gonna happen, is it? Mmm. Oh, look at that egg. Deep fried, soft boiled egg. Can't get better than that. With the rice, the curry sauce. Mmm. I'm just gonna keep eating and let you guys dream of cooking this dish. It's a, for me, that perfect balance. So crispiness with soft boiled egg, spicy, nice and savory, salty from the chicken, all those great tempered spices. Crunchy from the peanut, crunchy from the cucumber, a little bit more spice from the sambal. It's a type of dish that my chefs love to cook at the supper clubs at the school, which we actually do on a monthly basis. So if you are in the country, come along. And don't forget, guys, if you like to cook this type of food, subscribe to our channel. And like, like, like.